Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about D365 maps. We've been talking about these different collection classes, which are uh, ways that we can store lists of different values um, and then iterate through them later. They can be really useful in code uh, instead of using a temp table or something that would take a lot more work to create uh, and be even slower. Um, we can use these different types of collection classes to store values. So we've got things like arrays, lists, sets, maps, um, and structs. And so in this case, uh, we're going to talk about maps. Maps are a little different and they have specific helper methods that are really useful in specific unique uh, situations. So let's dive in and you'll see uh, what I mean. All right, so first, how do we define a map? We use this map class, we say new map, and then we specify what type we wanna pass in for this map. Now, what makes maps really cool and unique is they actually can store a pair of values. So two values, the first value we call the key, and then the second value we call value. So they're similar to maybe dictionaries if you've used C Sharp or another language. Um, and so they're great for storing two related values, right? Instead of creating a temp table with just two fields or something like that and needing to create it in the application um, explorer, we can just create a map and keep track of the relationship between two values and then add as many pairs as we want to this collection of um, items of the map. Um, so in this case, we, we use this types enum to specify what data type each value should be. So in this case, we specified string, but it could be string or class or anything like that. And then our second value is of type real. So each key needs to be the same data type and each value, the second of the pair, needs to be the same value, but they don't um, both have to be the same. So I've seen lots of cases where it's a string and a class or something more complex. So pretty neat that way. So that's how we declare a map. Then how do we add it to a map? Each one of these collection classes have a different method for how we add to that collection. In this case, we use the word insert and we specify our key and our value. So in this case, you could pretend as an example, we're inserting a sales ID, um, like a unique identifier to a sales order number. And then maybe we're storing the order total or something like that um, associated with that sales ID. It's just an example. So here we've stored um, two different pairs, this sales order ID and this value, and this sales order ID and this value. So pretty straightforward. That's how we add different values to maps. Well, what happens if we try to add the same key twice. That's one of the rules is that the keys actually have to be unique even though the values don't. So if we try to add this same key again, what's going to happen is the map's actually going to take this new value and overwrite the old value. So that's just something that we need to um, pay attention to and, and be aware of. So, you know, one chart, if you want to look at it, is this one here. You can see, um, if I scroll down a little bit here, the unique, the keys have to be unique. Each one of these values are unique, but you could have two different um, maps point or contain the same value underneath it. So that's allowed. Um, all right, so how do we actually print out these different map values? Similar to all these other um, collections, we actually use a map enumerator. So, and then we say map, dot get enumerator. This is going to return an object of type map enumerator. We can store it in a variable. Then we can put it in a while loop we can say map enumerator dot move next. This is both going to check to see are there any elements or items in our collection and um, if so, return true so that we keep looping through. If not, return false so we get out of our while loop and as well as move um, 
to the next element within our map. So then once it's at our next element, we can call map enumerator dot current key to get out our um, key and then current value to get out our value. If you remember with um, sets and lists, we just called current because there was one single value um, in each element of the list. Here, there's actually two and that can be just really useful. So that's how we loop through different elements in a map what about if we want to remove elements in a map? Similar to other um, kind of collections, we can just call the remove method and remove a um, different uh, uh, pair from our map. So here I've inserted the sales order one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. We overwrote seven, eight, nine, add another, another one <clears throat> called eight, eight, eight. And then finally, I'm going to remove one, two, three. And so if we printed this out, in the end, I would see that we've got one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, or I'm sorry, we've got seven, eight, nine, and eight, eight, eight. We won't have one, two, three because we removed it. <clears throat> so we should just have those two um, pairs within our, our printout of our map. Okay, so what else can we look at? Um, there's also an exists and lookup that can be really useful, um, similar to kind of like our end in a set. Um, they help us find various values within our map. <clears throat> so in this case, if we look at this code, I've declared a key that we want to find is sales order 888. And then I've inserted three different ones, one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, eight, eight, eight. And then next, I'm going to check, hey, does this key exist inside the map? Does 888? And it's going to return true or false. And if it's true, then I can call lookup on this map and say, OK, go ahead and look up this value in here. Let's get that value out. And it'll just return the associated value to the key that I've specified. So then it would print out the key um, <clears throat> of SO888 has an associated value of, in this case, 888.01. So pretty straightforward. If it doesn't exist, I could throw an error and say there was no, you know, the key for this sales order was not found in the map, right? Pretty straightforward. Now, one question that comes up is, could I just call lookup? And not knowing whether this key exists or not? And the answer is no. We always want to call exists before calling lookup because if we just call lookup, then we'll get a runtime error, um, which is probably not ideal. It's not good for us to handle it. So if we look at this example, right, I added three different key value pairs. Then I called lookup on something called sales order 555. I don't have that in my map. It's going to throw a runtime error. So that's not ideal. We'd rather be able to have an if else, you know, statement where I can display a really helpful error message. So um, just something to pay attention to or, you know, maybe I don't throw an error message and I continue on. Um, so that's really how maps work. Again, maps are extremely useful for storing different pairs of related objects. So one way to see that is by looking at some base Microsoft code. If you look at the class bomb calc base, we can see one example where a map is used inside of this get total item consumption method. Here, they've got a key that's storing the item ID slash the invent dim ID to kind of get like a unique skew and saying, hey, do we already have a value associated to that combination? And um, if we do, then go ahead and look it up and store and get out of it the associated value for total item consumption, right? So it can be really useful when we've got related values and we want to quickly look it up. If we had to write that code ourselves, right, it would take a, a bunch more for loops or, or something else. If we use, you know, a temp table, we'd have to add that to the application object tree. And, you know, maps are neat in that they can store 
more complex data types like a class. So I've seen where you store a key as a string, like the name of an action, and then the uh, class which associates you know, what operations does that action have. That's not something that we could really store in a temp table or use. So maps are um, extremely useful in, in that way. Okay, um, kind of one thing I like to address each time is um, we use the map enumerator. There is a map iterator. It's a best practice to use the map enumerator those are going to perform a little better and uses less code but i wanted to show you how you can use the map iterator if you've got a specific case where you need to use it so in this case we've declared our map we created a variable of type map iterator and then um, instead of calling map.get enumerator we pass the map object into a constructor for map iterator it's going to return out a new map iterator then in our while loop we need to call this method more more is just going to return a boolean uh, as to whether there are objects uh, or still objects within this um, map for us to iterate through if not it'll return false and we'll come out of the while loop if true it'll come in um, then we can get the value out by calling map iterator dot key and map iterator dot value so it'll different than map enumerator with the map enumerator we did current key and current value then we must call map iterator dot next to get it to move to the next value otherwise it doesn't happen automatically like the move next does for get enumerator so just a little bit more code to do it this way Additionally, kind of all these different collection type classes, maps, sets, etc., they all have this method called pack, which allows us to turn a map into a container, and then we can actually turn it back using map colon colon create. We can get our map back out. This is useful if we need to store a map um, as part of a batch job, right, that's going to run later, or we need to store our map into a container and then store that container onto a field because we can store containers on fields. Um, so there can be some useful ways um, of doing that, and this allows us to do that. Um, so yeah, those are really the main pieces that I wanted to show um, with maps. Again, they're kind of similar to C-sharp dictionaries if you use them before, but they can be extremely helpful in relating two things together, whether it's a string and a class, or a rec ID and a record, or a rec ID and a rec ID on another table. Uh, again, extremely helpful and can be a little faster to utilize compared to creating, say, a temp table, and you can use maps to store values that you wouldn't otherwise be able to easily store on a temp table uh, or anything else like that. So again, super useful um, as you see them through the base Microsoft code. Now you'll know how to work with them. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.